Following the murder of their parents, George and Hannah Brady were sent to two different concentration camps after the Nazis invaded Czechoslovakia. George was sent to the notorious Auschwitz-Birkenau. Hannah was sent to Theresien, or Theresienstadt, as the Nazis renamed it. But a few months later, she would follow her brother. The day before she was due on the transport, she asked her cousin to make her hair look really lovely for when she was reunited with her sibling. But when Hannah arrived at Auschwitz, the Nazis cut off all her hair and sent her immediately to the gas chambers. Prejudice and discrimination. When we see where it leads, we must stop it in its tracks. In January this year, I met two amazing and unique women from polar opposite backgrounds, but whose lives had shared a common path. I was given the chance to travel to the Czech Republic to interview an 87-year-old Holocaust survivor, and together we walked through the grounds of the former concentration camp of Terezin, where as a 16-year-old girl, she was held prisoner. But it was there in 1944 that she was subjected to a single act of cruelty, but which she came to understand later was an act of mercy which saved her life. Her story moved me in such a way that I hadn't imagined, but nothing prepared me for what came next. When I was back in England, a colleague told me a secret. Her father was a former German prisoner of war who settled in post-war Britain. But more than that, he was an officer in the SS. For her, growing up in post-war Britain was difficult enough. The challenge of keeping that secret had been immense. Few of her friends knew of her father's true role. For her brother, the sins of his father had proven too much to bear. And tragically, he took his own life. The lives of the two women I had met were worlds apart, yet intertwined. And the more I researched their histories, the more fascinated I became. I then contacted the German embassy for more information, but I was told that no records existed of the 40,000 German prisoners of war who settled in post-war Britain. And then I realised that the story of their children was a story which had never been told. John came to me because of my work with the Holocaust Educational Trust. And when he told me of his idea, and armed with an outline of the story, I was just as inspired as he was. Within weeks we had finished the first draft of the script, and we're now ready to move on to the next stage of development. This story is called Two Souls. Seen through the eyes of a young journalist, Two Souls spans geography and time. From a concentration camp in the 1940s, by the streets of Lancashire in the 1960s, and on to the present day. It views the Holocaust with a new perspective and explores the lives of British children of German POWs growing up in post-war Britain. But our vision for Two Souls is much more than just a film we want to make. In the autumn of 2013, I pulled together a team of talented individuals to make And She Cried, a short film about hate crime inspired by the tragic murder of Sophie Lancaster in 2007. And She Cried was made without funding. The crew and cast were all volunteers and ranged from students at college through to professional filmmakers but we got help from the biggest film-related companies in the world, and we secured over £100,000 worth of equipment on free loan for the duration of the production. They believed in us. But also, for me, an important part of the process of making And She Cried was the opportunity to offer internships and for everyone to learn from each other's strengths. I want to expand on the mentoring aspects of the filmmaking process with Two Souls. We'll accomplish this by creating opportunities for young people in the UK and in the Czech Republic to develop their own skills by being part of our team, working alongside us through the development, shooting and post-production phases. And beyond the film, we want the Two Souls project to use the story as an analogy to raise issues of conflict that separates communities around the world. The script is almost ready, the team is ready, and the research continues. And I know we can make something really special. But now, we need your help. We need £10,000 to help us secure the funding to match our huge ambition. So please, help us. Thank you for watching.